Ever since I first heard about a Falconer in the last epoch, I've been excited to play it. Rogue was the class that really grabbed me when I picked up the game, and some of my first characters were both blade dancers and marksmen. But there was that one thing, the forbidden fruit I couldn't play, Falconer. Now, when the Warlock reveal came out, I will admit, I was tempted to turn to the dark side. Warlock looks really strong, the curses are great. And yet, Falconer has completely blown me away. So don't worry, I'm back on Team Falcon. It's very likely going to be my starter, and I'm looking forward to scaling maybe the Falconer with some ballistas, or going Marksman with Trap Bombing for a second build. I know that's technically not a Falconer, but let's be honest, a Marksman using traps and potentially scaling those is pretty much just a Falconer with a little bit of a different reskin. And so I'm going to be talking about all that and much, much more as I go over today's Falconer reveal, because we have skills, we have builds, and we have really cool ideas. There's gonna be plenty of theory crafting, buckle in. And if you enjoy content like this, do be sure to get subscribed, leave a like while you're down there, Last up, a special thanks to Last Epoch and 11th Hour Games for sponsoring this video and also allowing me to make the video, which I would have made anyway. It's super awesome to see devs supporting the community and ensuring there's content for everyone to enjoy. So here we have the Falconer reveal post. We've got a very nice image of the Falconer itself, which you might actually notice is going to in part be in the thumbnail, or maybe not. We'll see if I change my mind by the time I finish editing this. Of course, it's subject to change. We don't know 100% everything that's gonna change from now until launch. Devs make last minute changes, they find bugs, fix bugs, all that stuff. So take everything with a little grain of salt. What is the Falconer? Well, it's a rogue build that gives you a Falcon. I know, novel concept. Who would've thought of a Falconer as a Falcon? And here are some of the skills that we'll be using. Falconry with Falcon Strikes, which looks really awesome. Dive Bomb, Net, Explosive Trap, Aerial Assault. Honestly, the thing that I'm most excited for outside of a Falcon itself is Explosive Trap because there's some really cool interactions with not only Falconer stuff, but all of Rogue as a whole, especially if you're wielding a bow. We've got a beautiful showcase video. And yes, that is a real bird. That is not fake. The Falconer passives, if you saw the Warlock reveal, well, these might look familiar. And if you didn't see the Warlock reveal, you can always check this out afterwards. First up, we have the Falconer-specific skill, Falconry, which summons a bird that can attack your enemies. This bird looks to be nicely aggressive, and you can even more actively have it dash across the screen, striking multiple foes. This solves two of my biggest problems with minions in other games, where A, they are either very sluggish and tend to stick to your character instead of aggressively attacking things, or B, they only really do single target damage and it's a pain to get them to do AoE. I very much like the Falconer, or the Falcon itself, focuses on mobility and solves both of these issues. There's also quite a wide variety of ways in which you can enhance its effects. These involve buffing the Falcon itself or allowing the Falcon to inherit your stats. More about that in the later theorycraft section of a video when I start talking about how I might use the Falconer and the Falcon in a build. Note, you can even have it drop flasks, which is a very under-supported archetype previously. I haven't experimented with any flask stuff in the past really outside of using it for utility, but it's cool to see it supported. And who knows, there could even be some viable bleed or poison or ignite flask builds. Next up, we have explosive trap. And out of all the Falconer skills, this is the one I'm most excited for. Technically, it's not even really a Falconer exclusive skill either. You can get it on Marksman and Blade Dancer. Now in particular, getting it on Marksman is what interests me most. Because throwing traps and maybe combining it with a decoy bomber is all in good. Kelthen's blasting agent never looked so great. Where things go to the next level is when you combine it with a bow build, where now, instead of throwing the traps, you're launching them from your weapon. Don't worry, the physics of this don't make sense, but they don't have to because it's awesome. And there's a lot of really niche, but super fun interactions that you can do by then having the launch traps launch other things, such as your bow projectile attacks, including detonating arrow. And that is what I am personally the most excited for from the Falconer in Last Epoch. Yeah, is the best Falconer build maybe not a Falconer? I don't know. I'll talk about it a little more in the theory crafting section when I get into some endgame stuff. Next up, there's Net, which I have to say whelmed me. It didn't underwhelm me. It didn't overwhelm me. It looks like a solid skill that gives you defensive utility, allowing you to backflip away from danger while also snaring enemies. There's further enhancement that you can make, which will specialize it for bleed and damage over time builds. 
So I suspect for a lot of players, net is going to be a supporting utility skill. A lot of these aren't super sexy. A lot of them aren't even super interesting, but they're very, very crucial. Just look at things like shift and smoke bomb. Can you really imagine a rogue without smoke bomb or even decoy? No. Again, they might not be the super flashy, very visual skills that you see. However, when it comes to making builds, it's going to be core. Furthermore, if you do want to go all in on a net build, I think Caltrops and Bleed are the way to do it. There's quite a lot of support, not only in the Falconer tree itself, but also with Falcon synergies for damage over time effects, and in particular, a huge emphasis on Bleed with a little bit for Poison as well. Next up, we have Aerial Assault, the first avian-powered movement skill in Last Epoch. And there's two exciting things here. The first is it's a movement skill that provides a lot of buffs and utilities. The second is it can be used to spawn Umbral Blades and inflict Shadow Daggers. Now, if you've played Last Epoch for a while, then you might be familiar with the fact that Shadow Daggers are often disgustingly overpowered. Umbral Blades are often disgustingly overpowered, and now you can combine them both. If my other ideas on Falconer don't work out, I'm absolutely going to be making some sort of Umbral Blade Shadow Dagger Aerial Assault build, since that should be hypermobile and deal a lot of damage while still allowing me to spec into utility and defenses. After all, if all of your damage comes from one skill triggering another skill, that leaves your other three skill slots completely open to make sure that you don't die and hopefully grab a lot of the defensive passives on the tree which Rogue now has available. Boy, it was rough when Rogue first started out. Last, but certainly not least, we have Dive Bomb. If you're a Falcon enjoyer, and if you want your Falcon to be doing a lot of damage, I suspect specializing in Dive Bomb is the way to go. Now, this doesn't seem to be the best at picking off lone enemies. However, if you're willing to put in the time running around a little bit, you're going to do absolutely massive spikes of damage against those large groups of enemies. And after all, the largest groups of enemies are the ones with the best loot and most EXP anyway. So this is kind of just something that the game and most ARPGs in general incentivize you to do. Personally, I don't think this is the route that I'm going to go, because it feels just a little bit too minion-y, and while the cooldown is fairly manageable, watching the birds is awesome, it's just not my style of build. I'd much rather burst damage that I personally control via my own attack if I'm going to go that route, or ideally do sustain damage over burst, which is why I often play dot builds. All right, Falconer leveling. Looks like it's mostly gonna be about buffing up your Falcon. And I'm totally okay with that. Having passive damage while leveling is absolutely insane. This way, as I'm going through the campaign, I don't have to worry too much about stopping to kill enemies, which means my campaign is gonna go way faster. Any build that has pets, minions, etc., absolutely awesome in the campaign. I was looking forward to Falconer for this reason. Should be a super smooth time to level. And all the throwing damage bonuses from Dexterity means that you can also scale your bow damage pretty well. Oh, and uh, also the bow damage for Ballista probably means if you need even more passive or pseudo passive damage, you can just spec into Ballistas and drop those as well for single target stuff. Very much looking forward to that. Also, Blast Rain passive just looks insane. Like making the traps rain down on your enemies. What's better than dropping arrows? just dropping explosive traps or other kinds of traps since you can convert the elements. Really like the idea here. But what about the end game? The end game's where Falconer's going to get interesting. And I think aside of the Falcon and player build, which you can definitely do, there's some support for bleed with things like rending barbs. This is gonna be a net caltrop type build. And I believe from the showcase, I saw the Falcon dropping caltrops. So you can turn your Falcon into an auto bleed machine Caltrop should slow enemies, it'll be a good time. Well, it'll be a good time for you. It won't be such a good time for the enemies. Then we've got a Ballista Falconer build, probably just going to be an extension of the leveling experience. There's a very good chance that this is the first build I play on Falconer because it looks really cool, really strong, very high damage potential. The Falcon itself should clear pretty well, so Ballistas will just drop and uh, annihilate bosses. Last up, Explosive Trap Blast Rain. I kind of think this is going to be a second or third build because you really want Rain of Winter and Morning Frost. This could also be my favorite Falconer build because I love the on crit, on hit play style. And this is almost the double on crit, on hit where you're throwing explosive traps but then launch detonating arrows that then trigger Rain of Winter and fill your screen with projectiles. Hopefully the servers are up for it though because that could generate quite a lot of lag. 
Now, usually when I play a build, especially one at the start of a season or league, I really do like to go in blind and just make my own mistakes. But Falconer's too cool to not tinker with theory crafting just a little bit. So I've put together a really quick Ballista slash Falcon rebuild. The idea for this is that I get a lot of free damage scaling from just grabbing any old random deck gear and also from my tree, and it's probably mostly just going to be leveling. Which means there's nothing super fancy here, I haven't even filled out the equipment. And for the passives, uh, I'll be honest with you, most of these probably not necessary. I'm not 100% sure how debuffs and minions interact in Last Epoch. There's a good chance this won't even work. And you know what? If we just get rid of it, it doesn't matter that much. So think of this as a very, very early game focused thing, nothing really intended for the late game. I've got a Ballista. Aerial Assault is my movement skill of choice. Decoy and Smoke Bomb for defenses. I'd spec them out with the generic stuff you'd expect. And Falconry, because I think Falcon's going to be a good way to clear. That way, I only need to drop my Ballistae for single target, which should make the playstyle much, much faster. Especially because you have Tactician and Terror Rings, which allow you to significantly buff both the Falcon and its aerial prowess, and also buff your Ballista's single target damage. In terms of other passives, I grabbed Final Souvenir. I don't 100% know if it's worth it. It seems good to add extra CC from a Caltrop effect though. And aside of that, my big goal was to scale minion modifiers and give myself additional survivability buffs. There was a good chance those extra points that I took out of Marksman would go into Blade Dancer to get things like Cloak of Shadow and Shroud of Dusk. Being able to dodge and being able to take glancing blows is super, super, super important. Now, in terms of falconry itself, falconer's journey, of course, so that I can grab decks and be good to go, all the way up to blood dance for additional falcon strikes. And then I came down here because I wanted to get, you know, damage scaling on my falcon, go for the eyes for crit scaling on my falcon, and crit multi on my falcon. Basically, I'm making my falcon do all of the heavy lifting by buffing it up as much as is possible. On my ballista tree, I went with a very simple, perfect aim for crit, Bodkin bolts for enemies pierced. Uh, there could be a couple more points here, but I'm not really going to use them to clear, so I don't think it's super important. I also grabbed twinned bolts for 40% chance to double shoot, so they should fire quite powerful volleys. Now, if I wasn't using it purely for single target, explosive delivery is probably better, since that'll give it a big old AoE, I think. I mean, I just assume when something says explode, it means area of effect. But this is very much my quick first impressions, because there's a lot of cool stuff with Falconer, and until I get my hands on it, until I'm actually playing the class, leveling up, experimenting, and making mistakes, I'm not going to know for sure. I also think in the end game, there's quite a few things that I do differently here. For example, I might be able to go pure Falconer playstyle, or I could go straight into ailments, because I do think bleed synergies, especially with net and caltrops, could be an incredibly powerful way to play. I believe it's in Aerial Assault where you get to drop Caltrops. Yes, there's a whole section here, Treacherous Pursuit. But this also feels like the sort of thing where during the campaign, I want the hit and crit damage to directly kill things. While I'm going through early monos, I want to directly kill things. And later on, I'll stack so many bleeds that I might as well be doing instant damage. There's also really good support for this in the Falconer skill tree with Crimson Skies. As I believe a lot of that, does end up transferring back to the Falcon and the Ballistas from Crimson Shroud, though I'm not 100% sure on the interaction there. Though I guess that is something you can test since you can get Crimson Shroud on Blade Dancer and spec into Ballista and just quickly try it. So I might do that at some point in the future. So here we have Lizard IRL's Bowmage profile from his guide. Yes, I have shamelessly going to this. For most of the gear, the general goal is you're using Reign of Winter to get the Icicle proc and also a massive amount of both bow and spell cold damage plus cold pen. You're using Morning Frost to stack even more damage on both your attacks and spells via dexterity scaling. So you'll see dex, and dex, and dex. Yep, there's pretty much dex on all the gear possible. After that, because you're using Morning Frost, you're going to need to be extra careful to have both fizz and cold resistance because of a minus 1% per dexterity. Don't worry, there's a few ways to make up for this on gear. Uh, one good example of this is just getting a lot of it. Now, 
He's using Smoke Bomb, Shuriken for extra defenses, Shift, Decoy, and Detonating Arrow. In other words, this is a very high damage build that doesn't need too much damage from gear or the skill tree. But if I was going to play it as a Falconer, there's a couple things that I'd need to do. First is grabbing five points from honestly anywhere and putting them into Raptor's Wings. You're going to have haste up pretty much all the time, and it enables you to get Explosive Trap. So let's just quickly save a copy of this and do just that. Who knew that one of the best builds on Falconer was in fact not going to be a Falconer, but would be a Marksman? That's Dex, that's Attack Speed, it's Dodge Rating. You know what? Maybe I don't take it from here. Um, that's Defensive Stuff, which is pretty good. What about here? There has to be something here that I don't super need. Ah, uh, Sharpshooter's okay. You know, I'm... I'm hesitant on these. All right, I'm going to do this just for now. It's probably not optimal, but YOLO. There we go. Explosive trap. That's the important part. Come in here, despecialize, and respecialize as explosive trap. This is live theory crafting. I have no idea what I'm doing with a lot of this. I just have a very basic understanding from the reveal. So minefield, you want more traps. You want this. Traps cost more mana, but it should be fine. Now it's blast rain with impact trigger. That way it goes off instantly. Next up, you're gonna come over here. Uh, you need one point minimum arrow traps. So detonating arrow is now used and extra bow damage per three decks. Last up, I kind of wonder if you go into cold snap mines or maybe you go into Lightning Bomb. This was recommended in the build section. It will inherit the scaling from Morning Frost, so it's just another proc for even more damage. And I guess, technically, you could go with this, and this, and that way you get all the nice benefits from Cold Snap Mines, to my understanding, without any actual downside. I guess with the 35% less damage. So maybe this is worth it, maybe not. Alternatively, you could go to Trap Sprinkler and Automated Bombardment, like so. And just drop these two points. You know, I'm going to go with that instead. I think this is better. Pay extra mana, because mana cost... This isn't per trap, right? Should be fine. That's a scary thing to say. There we go. We've got 20 points. On Detonating Arrow, right now, it's, of course, the Arcing Blast, which is usually what you'd want. But we're instead going to go into the Mana Arrow. This way you can spam it without your mana costs. Also, far shot doesn't matter. Oh, sorry, fast shot doesn't matter. You're not needing attack speed. Uh, Jolt charge, gonna drop that and go into Frostfang. I think we'll have enough cold res. I certainly hope we'll have enough cold res. That frozen resonance is valuable. And for the last points, um, it could be worth dropping this. I'm not 100% sure if Barrage is actually worth keeping when it only has that 15% chance on exploding. Then again, you are firing so many arrows from all the traps. My understanding is each trap drops detonating arrows, but maybe it's totally fine. And so yeah, that is how I would convert over an endgame bow mage into an endgame explosive trap detonating arrow bow mage. The idea is you have procs to go with your procs to go with your procs, and each proc then procs something else which all give you a chance to fire icicles and you get additional defenses because you're super tanky still doing all that fun rogue stuff. Uh, in theory, you could even put like, I don't know, something else here. Obviously, you're not pressing shuriken anymore. Uh, I think you don't have detonating arrow on your bar, actually. That's the difference. It's explosive trap. Detonating arrow is triggered. I don't know. What's really good at base? Maybe Dark Quiver. Just grab Dark Quiver. Don't even specialize it. It's another button to press that you can pick up for a little bit of a damage boost. And so, yeah, that's a really quick look at how I would do a detonating arrow explosive trap Reign of Winter build. Reign of Winter was one of the first builds that I played in Last Epoch after going Shadow Cascade. I'm very excited to revisit it. I'm definitely playing it at some point in the near future, probably shortly after 1.0's release. I don't know, I'm doing one Falconer build to the start, so maybe I'll go play Warlock, then come back and play Reign of Winter after that. Maybe I'll do some other different Bow Mage as people discover new tech, because I do kind of want to experiment with Low Life Rogue, and I don't know if the two are compatible. 
Now, if you want to experiment and do your own Falconer or Warlock theory crafting, the full build planner is available over at Maxwell GG, where you can also read the full Maxwell reveal of the Falconer and check out Zizarin's awesome video that did involve a real Falcon, and that's just super cool. Now again, a big thanks to 11th Hour Games for sponsoring the video. If you want to check out Last Epoch with 1.0 launching on the 21st of February, then you can do so using the link below to get either the base game or the enhanced editions, which do come with some MTX. So if you haven't yet purchased Last Epoch, do check it out using the link below. You can even do all of these things while helping to directly support the channel by purchasing the standard deluxe or ultimate edition through my Nexus, which is nexusgg slash T-E-N-K-I-E-I. Link to that will also be down below. Now, if you're looking for something else to watch, maybe check out my Path of Exile Player's Guide to Last Epoch, where I go over some of the big differences in the games and some of the things that you'll find familiar. I also recently talked about the Warlock and did some theory crafting for builds that I might want to play. And of course, I gave my full thoughts on trade, so you can check out all of those up in the card and down below. Now quickly, before I go, a big thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. You'll see some of their names scrolling past on the screen right now. But that's about it for me today. I have to say I was super excited for Falconer and somehow I'm even more excited now. The class just looks awesome and I can't wait to actually get into the game and play, especially with the explosive trap bow trigger stuff. So thanks for watching to the end. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again in the next one.